hello 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 hopefully lots of you are here to join us um just so that you remember we are going to try and make this um a regular every wednesday afternoon um if you are with us please comment and let me know you're there and tell me whether you're watching on youtube or facebook that would be lovely so today i thought i would do one of the demos that we didn't manage to get done when we did um the tv last week so those of you that saw tv we launched um four new stamps uh, so we're going to be using one of those today. Going to be using some stencils, some oxides, some brushes. So let's flip this round so that you can see. Ooh, let me take that off there, and then you can see what we've got to use today. So we're going to be using. I'll do this bit first to show you because it's easier. Um, the Make Art Station. If you haven't already seen us with this, this is fabulous. It's really, really good. Um, if you're doing stenciling and if you like me the tapes always ripped it um, so this has just been a complete game changer for me so you'll see that one in use um, so the main focus of today's piece or our topper piece is going to be our new foliage collection uh, stamp set so this is one of our 8.99 sets so it's I suppose roughly about three and a half inches roughly have a quick look I don't know exactly very rarely measure them. Um, where are we? Yeah, about three and a half, four inches uh, for this set. And then you've made it out, Debbie. Well done. <laughs> you've been a busy lady. Hi, Marianne. On YouTube, we're here. So I am right. You come up as different on the program we usually come up in different colors one for facebook i'm assuming debbie you're on facebook and marianne you're on youtube as you're telling me and you're in a different color sunday has come around so fast carol hasn't it we're just busy getting organized for that those of you that don't know we have a workshop this sunday so back to what i was telling you about so we have got um this one is our falling leaves stencil so this is a dl stencil we're also going to use um Distress Oxides, Hi Sue, in Forest Moss, but obviously whatever colour you fancy doing this in is entirely up to you. Um, we're going to be using Inversa Mark ink. The gold embossing powder, in, um, Honeydew Craft gold embossing powder without glitter, this one. We're going to be using our lovely big blending brushes that come in these little cases, which are fab. Um, and then obviously we've got some glues, our Honeydew Crafts sticky glue, so it comes in 120ml or 30ml. And then we've got our pens and the colours I'm using are Deep Red, which is 260, Olive Green, which is 43, and Mid Green, which is 46. <laughs> Debbie, you must have nearly all of the colours by now. Anyway, let's get these bits cleared out of the way and then we can get started on what we're going to be doing. Let's get going. I keep moving this mat around. Normally I've stuck it down and I haven't today for some reason. It's driving me insane already. So I have prepped quite a bit of this ahead of time because obviously I, this was what I was planning on doing on TV the other day. So as we didn't get to it, I thought we might as well use it. Otherwise it's just going to be a waste of a demo. And as I dem was prepping these demos at like one and two o'clock in the morning, I thought we wouldn't waste it. So we're going to come in with our, we call these the Wendy boards. But it's a make art station. I'll just tuck this up here out of the way. And we're going to take the DL stencil. I will try and give you some measurements as we're going along, but I forgot to write them all down. Just checked my list for the workshop on Saturday. It's going to be a busy day, Tina. Hello, Mum. Uh, right, so let me just grab my... Um, trimmer and I can give you the measurements quickly before we keep going so it's an 8 by 8 card and then we will have you're getting a sneak peek but that piece is one of our layers and it's 7 and 3 quarters square our top piece that must be slightly bigger than seven and three quarters. 
seven and three quarters and this one is seven and a half inch square then we've got a couple of different layers you're going to need two that are three and three quarters by seven and three quarters and you're going to need two that are seven and a half by three three and a half isn't it by three and a half and then your topper pieces are four by five and three quarters and three and three quarters by five and a half. So hopefully that's all of those bits covered. If it's not, I will try and go back over them and write them down and post it on Facebook if anybody missed it today. Hopefully that will cover everybody. You can go back and do it in slow motion. So we're going to go with this piece first. Now I've got all my pieces in the muddle. Hang on a minute, peoples. Hang on a minute. There's those. Oh, there's a scrap piece. That's why I was in the muddle. I'm thinking that shouldn't be there. We have got so everything we're using today is on our website um, and I will try and do a link to them I oh, see look, I'm, I'm trying to sound all posh I have no clue what I'm talking about Martin will do a link to them um, hopefully on our Facebook page I will link all the products that we've used today so that you can have a look at them so we are going to go in so you, that's how simple it is. No taping up, no nothing. These magnets are super, super strong and that isn't going anywhere. So these Wendy boards are... I'll be honest, I bought this as a, a Mother's Day present for Mum and I don't think she's ever had it. I think I use it all the time. See, Debbie, you're right. It's my favourite tool, tool too. Hi, Liz. Um, so we are just going to go in with the large blending brush and I've loaded some ink onto here. And the nice thing about the large blending brush is it, happens, it goes on so quick. So if you want to move that magnet around to get in that top corner, you just pick it up and move it, pop it back up. That's how easy they are to use. They are so good. I love this. So we just keep inking that all up. I love these DL stencils as well. They're really easy to just pop in and out of projects. And then just to double check, I'm happy with how that looks. And I've purposefully gone a little bit heavier at one end than the other because I quite like that look with this stencil. And we'll pop that off to one side. How easy is that? None of this faffing around with um, bits of tape here, there and everywhere. I love it. They're so good. Hi Janice. Hi Jan. I can't believe this workshop's come round so fast, Jan, can you? It's just flown by. Doesn't seem like five minutes ago it was a summer and we were absolutely boiling in that room. So, here we go again. <laughs> okay, Fletcher, the kids bought mine. Debbie, see, look, we all... I See, I claimed mum's. I do really need to get her another one. It's not very nice of me to have claimed it and not given it back here. So I'm just now going to ink around the edges. I'm just going to put my board out of the way for a second. Just going to ink around the edges with that same colour. I don't want to load it up too heavy. Now everything that we, as I said, this was a demo I, did on, I didn't get to on Crate and Craft, but everything that we had on Crate and Craft, which I don't think is now longer available on there, is all available on our website. So we launched four new stamp sets um, and obviously We've got all of our stencils and everything on there as well, but we will definitely put links on there for everybody. So literally just going around really quickly. And I love how, with the big brushes, how quick you can just make that happen. And we just pop these. That's all I'm gonna do, layer one on top of the other. Just grab my glue, which I've managed to send flying. Stick this down 
if you've ever crafted along with me before or watched any of my videos, when I've got lots and lots of pieces, I try and put them together as I'm going. That way I've only got one piece to lose instead of two or four or six or however many pieces I've got. So you'll see me do this quite a lot, get pieces ready and then put them off to one side. The only thing you have to be careful about then is that you haven't stuck it down before you needed to do something else to it, which I have been known to do as well. So as I said, this is the forest moss and it's probably a colour I don't often go to. But when I go to it, I think to myself, why didn't I use that before? Because I really like it. It's a bit of a funny one, this one, but it's a really nice colour. It's a kind of a, a neutral green, if that makes sense, because it's you can use it quite lightly and you'll get a lighter finish. Use it quite heavy and you're going to get a darker finish. So if you're a bit stumped on what greens to go for, that would work. I've just realised I've positioned my um, battery charger wire in a really awkward place for everything I'm doing today. Typical me. So there we go. And as I said, I purposefully did it slightly lighter or darker. I quite like the effect that we've got slightly darker down the bottom and go, slight, uh, go slightly, dark, slightly lighter as you go higher up. Not so obvious on the one I just did, but that kind of shows you. Let me straight up. It's going to drive me insane. I don't know about you lot, but it's going to drive me bonkers. So those two to one side. And I've no idea what that just fell, but something did it and it bounced. So we're good. I apologise if the whole thing shook. <laughs> Lost two flowers and found them after you'd redone them. Story of my life. See, Debbie, you need to do what you're going to do with them as you're going along. Something fell down there. I think I've probably got too much under my table, which has knocked something off. Oh, that's all right, we can survive without that. Martin's just come in and rescued whatever it was that fell on the floor. So, we, um, oh, I'm gonna go back to my stencil quickly. Make sure I've got the right piece. See, because I took all those pieces away to, to measure for you, I've got myself, I've got them all laid out in the order I needed to do them in. And I've got a bit of a mud on now. So we're going to go back to the stencil. And we're going to place this piece on here. And then I'm going to pop my stencil. Now think about this. If you go with the um, falling leaves one, you don't. what you're going to do, you don't really want your leaves up the other way. Because it's called falling leaves for a reason. It's like they're falling down. Now I'm going to position this right on fairly close to the edge. But not right on the edge. Because if you position it slightly wrong and it isn't. You don't cover the whole page. It will look a bit weird. So think about that when you're doing it. Um, I'm not going to load too much ink onto the brush here. I'm I want quite a light finish because this is the inside of my card. So those of you that have crafted with me or have watched me before, you'll know that I don't... I love to finish like the inside of the cards and just carry everything through. So this is just a really, really light finish over the top just to tie everything together. Now the trick to this, when you do it, is not to go hard in on this edge. You'll notice I kind of just faded off the edge there. I'm not gonna go right up against this line. Number one, I don't want to ink on this side of my card and it will give it a much softer finish. She hopes. There we go. So that's what I mean by I haven't gone hard in and got that hard line down there. Let me show you, come in a bit closer. So it's quite a faded outline on the side there. That I think is all we're gonna use the board for, but we won't put it too far away, just in case. So now we will pop this in. So I've taken my eight by eight card. Get these out of the way. Taking the eight by eight card, I've got ink all over my fingers, so we're gonna get it all over the card if we're not careful. And all I've done is taken the front panel and folded it back on itself and burnished the, the, the side here. I'm then going to pop these on the side panels. So now our three pieces that were originally five pieces become one piece. Oh, 
Oh, I've been missing a few things, I think. Um, no, unfortunately, Debbie, we're not at the NEC, but we will be at the Motorcycle Museum a couple of weeks later. Um, so no, we're not at the motorcycle at the NEC on the 3rd to the 6th. But hopefully you'll be able to get along to see us at the other one. Um, and then obviously you saw me ink all the way around that the, the individual panels so this I've done exactly the same on the larger panel and this is going to be our layer on the inside of our card so we've brought the whole theme all the way through the card and obviously it doesn't matter what your blend is like because you're about to cover that up so if you did watch us on TV the other day you will see that Crate & Craft did run out of our brushes we do have a few left in stock on our website. Um, I'm not sure. I think Martin's watching this in the office. So if he is, maybe he can try and put a link to it in the comments so that people can see where they are. We are really limited on them. Um, so if you are going to go for brushes, be quick because it's going to be about a month then before, at least a month before we get them back in stock, we think. Everything's taking so long to get here these days. So then the piece that you just did along the side as well, I'm going to pop that in. And then there's something else I used. In fact, I didn't tell you about this one. Before I go any further, let me grab the stamp so I can show you. So I'm going to pop a sentiment in here. And what I'm going to do looks a bit random because I'm not actually going to emboss it. But I want to use the same colour that I used for the rest of the ink, inking. But obviously it's an oxide, so it doesn't stamp particularly clearly. Um, and you can then, if you do it this technique as well, you can also emboss it. So I'm going to use, again, I do things that you're probably not supposed to do with your oxide and stuff. But hey ho, they're yours, you can do what you want with them. So I've got the Versamark ink. And I'm just going to ink up my stamp so it goes a little bit sticky. Then I'm going to take my oxide and I'm going to ink straight over the top of that. So hopefully that will give you a much um, clearer image. I'm going to have to stand up for this bit. I can't stamp sitting down very well. And then we're just going to pop that in there. Now, if you did want to emboss this, you could do that because it will the oxide will stay wetter for longer. Fingers crossed this worked. There we go. So you don't get quite such a muddy or distressed look to your lettering. You'll still get a slightly distressed look because it's a distressed ink. But um, so that's the base of your card all put together really really easy so i'm going to pop that off to one side and we're going to do our um use our falling leaves so i'm going to take oh i better wipe that over because i'm going to use clear and it's got black ink on it for my workshop at the weekend oh that might have just been a little slip you're gonna those of you on our workshop at the weekend now know that you're going to be using this set of stamps a really lovely set you can use it for so many different occasions and there's so many different looks to it bear with us so i'm just going to ink that stamp up first mark ink lots and lots of little light taps all over it You're welcome, Yvonne. Hopefully that will make some sense to everybody. And we're going to stamp this out now. This may come out a little bit dirty because my stamp wasn't particularly clean, but you'll get the idea. I've got one done earlier just in case we needed it. Now this is just normal stamping cardstock, our super smooth cardstock. So we do this in two different weights, 350, oh sorry, 300 and 250 GSM. And you get 25 sheets for, I think it's 5.99. Um, but this is what I choose to stamp on majority of the time particularly if it's for stamping and embossing because it works really, really well. As I said, it's a little bit dirty because 
my stamp was still a little bit dirty. And we're just going to pop some gold embossing powder over the top. Give that a little flick. Pick up a little bit more down there. And don't be scared to keep going back over it with your powder. Just a light little tap over the top. Bit of a blow on it where my fingerprints were. And then we'll pop this back in the pot. So this is the gold embossing powder that doesn't have any glitter in it. Hi Mary, hope you're having a lovely holiday. The pictures look fab. So, heat your heat gun and get it as hot as it can be. And then I heat from underneath as you all know, but that is personal preference, you don't have to. It does take a little bit longer when you heat from underneath to do it. And please be careful with your fingers because it gets very hot under there. And then if you, if you haven't embossed, if you've realised I'm not in shock, you can see that changing from a sort of a dark brown to a, a shiny gold. Oh, that was my fingers. shiny gold foliage collection stamp just give that while it's still warm a little bit of a wiggle and then we're going to use these three pens now most of you know that if I use clean color pens I tend to, to be blending with them so I will always use a watercolor cardstock if I'm blending but I'm not blending this so I've just gone with the super smooth because I want that real solid look to it but you do still need to remember that you have to blot these because you've embossed it you need to make sure that you um, blot them because wherever your pen lands on top of that embossing powder it's just going to sit there don't go keep going back over the same thing um, same section if you're going to just use the stamping foam because otherwise it'll start to, to tear your cardstock which you stamping foam stamping cardstock and you don't want that to do that I really didn't want the blend. I wanted that real solid pop colour. So we sell the um, clean colour pen. These are the clean colour, clean colour real brush pens. And we do them as individuals because obviously they're quite expensive. Um, you don't want, if they're a colour that you're not going to use, that you quite often will get in sets. And some of the sets duplicate themselves. Um, then that's not what you want really. So we do the individuals so that you can choose the colours that you want to work with. And you can build up your collection. Ours are only three fifty a pin, instead of I think they're supposed to be about four ninety five, something crazy like that. So we just completely fill that one in. And we're going to do the same with the other two. So that one was our deep red two sixty. Remember, go in and do that bit of blotting. Liz, they're the best, aren't they? Something's on Carol's list for Sunday. I'm not sure what it was. Hope we've got it. <laughs> and this is what I mean. Look, you can. If I bring that up to the camera, you can see where all the veins were of the leaves. So you can see where all the embossing powder was. And if you smudge that right across your image once you're done, you'll be cursing. I can promise you, you'll be cursing. Just going to quickly go in and colour these leaves. And obviously they dry a lot smoother than when you first colour them. Ah, this set of stamps is on your list for Sunday, is it?
Carol met a lady um, on our workshops. Carol comes from quite away from where we are, so she comes and stays here to do the workshop. And she met a lovely lady on our on her first ever workshop with us called Sarah, and they've become really good friends. They speak, I think, almost, if I'm not wrong, almost every day, Carol, I believe. Sarah's as lovely as Carol, so that's always good. But it's so nice. Our workshops, we've got so many ladies that all met on, work, on workshops and now go on holiday together and do all sorts of things. So I've done three or four, four leaves in the same colour. And then I'm just going to go in with the, the slightly lighter one, just on one of the leaves, because I like to make things a little bit different. Change things up a bit. And remember, go in and blot. And obviously, here's one I did earlier, because I do want to make sure it's 100% dry before I stick it down. And then I also did the same with the layering for our topper. I just inked around the edge, and that gives us our layer for our topper. Now, you can pop in a sentiment on here if you wanted to, or anything like that that you fancy. And as I say, if I can't work out, or if Martin can't work out how to pop a link on in the comments here, I will come back on once I've finished our Facebook Live and pop a link onto our website to all of these goodies. And if I'm really clever, um, I will... Hang on, that's not very straight. I can't talk and put things in a straight, put things on straight at the same time. I'm really clever I'll try and take a picture of the card as well and post that at the same time you never know I might manage it so we're just going to then pop this on here and that will be our topper now remember this card opens like so and you all know I love doing these types of cards so you're only going to be sticking on one side of your card <laughs> work out which side you want it to be and then you are sticking just that one section you're better to be short on that rather than too much glue. The worst thing that can happen, hi Carol, the worst thing that can happen is that you have to stick a bit of paper on the back. Now I need to stand up to do this. Now by using wet glue it gives you that little bit of wiggle room to get it in the middle, but if you're not quite where you want to be, just move it about a bit. If you're going to go with the foam pads and you're going to do this, pop some glue on the back of your foam pads before you stick it down. And that's it. All I did ahead of schedule was one panel of the um, falling leaves stencil and I cut it out. That's all I did. And cutting out with those measurements, because they're not the stupid sixteenths and seven sixteenths and nine of this and nine eighths and not that you can have nine eighths, but you know what I mean. Um, it's a really quick, easy card to do. You're right. Debbie, that little bit, adding that little bit of red in there. Let me come up in a bit closer that you can see it. I try and use the screen, the camera to zoom in and out, but I'm really not very good at it. And all you end up doing is seeing a bit of a splodge. Um, and just by bringing that colour in there really makes that little bit pop. And I really like it with the gold embossing powder on there too, rather than a clear or a black. It's a little bit softer somehow. So, hi Linda. I did as you asked me, Linda, I've made sure I've mentioned the colours that we've used. So let's pop back and I can show you, go through what it was that we actually did use. So we've used foliage collection and falling leaves stencil. We've used the clean colour pens in deep red 260, olive green 43 and mid green 46. We've used these fab blending brushes and as I said we are limited stock on them at the moment but they will come back eventually it just takes us a little while to get them back so if you miss out don't forget us um, we also use that Versamark ink to do the sentiment with the oxide remember that little tip um, we've used forest moss ink we've used the gold embossing powder now it's not the golden glamour it's the gold so it's the gold without glitter in it <clears throat> excuse me that sentiment I used is from the birthday cake stamp set so it's this happy birthday here it's 
one I use huge amounts. I really like this font. So I use this one quite a lot. So that's the sentiment that we used. And then obviously we used our sticky glues, which comes in the two sizes. And then that fab piece of equipment known affectionately in our place as the Wendy board, but the Make Art Station. Um, they are 19 99 so they're not horrendous amounts of money. They're, in, they're money, but they're not... They're, for what you would use and what you save on cardstock and tape, etc., etc., and you have it forever. Um, let me just quickly talk you through this. So you obviously you get... This is what we hang it up with, so you don't get the pink ribbon, but you'll get the idea. So you get your four big magnets, and don't panic, because when it comes out of the box, I think the magnets are on the back. And then this ruler, which is also magnetic. So it will hold things in place for you. I'm trying to balance everything. So if you wanted to, you could pop that stencil on and hold it in place with your magnet, with your um, with your magnetic ruler. So that's really handy too. Um, do you need me to bring that card home to you, Mum? <laughs> I have to photograph it first, so you can't have it yet. <laughs> so hopefully um, everybody enjoyed that. So everything is over on our website, honeydewcrafts.com co.uk or .com um, both will take you to our website that keeps you your work really steady oh, it's on your list for you might have to be quick we've only got a few of those left Tina so come in and grab it or we can pop one for aside for you but they are brilliant if you are coming to the workshop I've got to think what we're doing um, I'm not sure if you would need it or, to, or not but if you've got one bring it with you Liz, you didn't realise the ruler was magnetic. Oh, good. At least I've taught you all something today. Um, as I say, everything that we've used is available on our website. Um, the brushes are limited. We don't have a huge range or stock left of the Distress Oxide either because everybody seems to have suddenly run to that one. Um, if anybody's got any questions, email me at honeydewcrafts at gmail.com or you can get us on Facebook or comment on our YouTube page. I will go on and pop the measurements for this particular card on there as well. It'll take me a few minutes to just go away and measure it and then I can bring up, put all that information on there for you and then I can take it home for mum to use for somebody, obviously. <laughs> um, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Um, we're not on TV now until the middle of next month. I have a feeling it's the 15th-ish and then that will, we may do one in December, but at the moment I think that's going to be us. Just as I was finishing, Jill, that's not good. You'll have to go back and watch us again. Um, what else did I need to tell you? I think that's it, really. Uh, we've had a crazy, crazy month. Um, so if anybody's wondering why we've been a little bit AWOL on social media, it's because it's been absolutely mad. We did two TV shows. We've had um, workshops. We've had shows. We've been all over the place. Uh, we've got workshop here in our unit on Saturday and Sunday. And then... We may be able to be open in the unit the following Saturday, but I will confirm that on our Facebook page as soon as that's confirmed. But it would only be Saturday morning if we are, which will be from 9 till 12. Uh, we'll be back here next Wednesday for another Facebook Live. Uh, hopefully I'll have had time to kind of give you a bit of a head, heads up of what we're actually going to do so you can um, join in with me. Gail will have to go back and watch us on Catch Up because it was a quick one today, see? As I said, all I did was cut this. If you want to see what we're doing, Gail, I'll, I'll flip it back over so you can see. Um, all we did ahead was our um, cutting. Everything else we did beforehand. And, um, what, half an hour? And it's a really nice card to make. This is the type of card you could make batches of or even just pop sort of a Christmassy sentiment on there because that's actually quite a Christmassy looking card, really, with those colours, isn't it? Oh, you've got yours, have you, Jill? Good, glad it's arrived. I know a few people have um, had a few not arrive yet, but they are coming, I promise. And any of you that have ordered off our website, it is coming, unfortunately. Um, postal strikes are causing a little bit of a delay, but not too much, which is great. Um, just maybe by a day or two, so bear with us. They are coming your way, I promise. So, you get me again. Hopefully you've enjoyed that one, and we will be back next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Uh, hopefully you can join us. Have a lovely afternoon and see you soon.